So when somebody is wearing an inappropriate shirt, a logo, doing inappropriate things, how did we as photographers respond to that? Do we still take the picture? I got sent a question that I get asked on a pretty regular basis about what do we do with inappropriate things in our pictures. Uh, so let me just read this real quick. It says, Walt Disney World Photo Pass won't deliver photos that have offensive content, certain commercial content, etc. I was thinking about this because I saw a lady with a ask me how you can get free CBD button and a number of people with various risque content or curses. Did you tell people that you couldn't take their photo? Did you ask them to try to hide certain things so you could photograph them? Good question. One thing that has definitely happened in the last few years uh, is the screening process at the gates. It used to be that if you came to the park and you weren't wearing an appropriate shirt, they would tell you to change or not let you in. Originally, they might even give you another shirt, but people have taken to abusing that. Now you see shirts that are definitely not Disney appropriate in the parks. It's become a problem. But even when I was there, we still had policies about it. Because you would have people that would put the shirts in a bag or pull them out later or do various other things. They'd pull out a sign. They'd want to make gestures. So what did we as photographers do? How did we deal with these things to make sure that our pictures were appropriate and not an issue? Well, there were a number of things that we were not allowed to take pictures of. That is Disney Photo Pass Photographer, so we had to make sure that these things were not in our pictures. One, anything offensive or that could be taken as offensive. This included shirts, logos, or gestures with drugs, curse words, gangs, sexual content, uh, horror. So if it had skulls and blood or something like that, it, we were probably going to notice it and go, eh, eh. We would rather err on the side of caution than end up with a problem. Those are basically not okay at any time. If it is graphic, sexual, curse words, uh, we're not going to do it, period. Not happening. Brand logos could sometimes be there. Uh, if it was an alcohol brand, uh, for example, Budweiser or something, we may not because it could look like the company was endorsing it. So that would get on a fine line. However, I get people asking all the time when I do these things, well, what about Universal shirts? Are those allowed? Is it family appropriate? It doesn't matter if it's Six Flags or Universal or competition or other cartoon characters or stuff like that, as long as it's family appropriate. There is no rule saying you can't wear a shirt from a different company. That, um, that would be silly, okay? So before you start going, but, but what about my Incredible Hulk shirt? It's fine. If it's a universal, your Harry Potter shirt is fine. As long as you don't have Harry doing something he shouldn't be doing, okay? Family friendly, family appropriate. That's your basic rule. Now, with the characters, it would get a little bit more strict. One, no food, no drink with them, no wrappers, no brand logos, especially not alcohol um, or drugs. So your CBD shirt, your marijuana leaf, uh, things like that, no, uh-uh. Did not want to make it look like the characters were endorsing something that they wouldn't. No gestures making fun of the characters. For example, as a guest, you could not give Mickey bunny ears. But Mickey could do it to you. I know that's a little goofy. Goofy would like to do that a lot. But no, you could not do any hand gestures or anything that would be making fun of the character. In addition to all the normal rude gestures, no gang signs, nothing like that. Nothing that uh, Disney wouldn't endorse with the character. She didn't want it to look like Mickey was advertising for Budweiser. That was a no-no. So with the characters, it's basically the same rules as before, but with a little bit more strictness. Nothing to make fun of the characters. Don't look like you're endorsing a product that not everybody would be okay with. Alcohol, drugs, things like that. Other things that we had to be aware of as photographers, uh, in particular if we were out and about, uh, if we're taking a picture in the parks, we had to make sure that we didn't get any other brand logos. Uh, so, for example, Rock and Roller Coaster for a long time, uh, we had to watch the Aerosmith sign. Uh, if you were over by the Tiki Room, you had to watch the Dole sign. Why? Because when you take a picture with those logos, 
then you end up with marketing and copyright fees or trademark fees. We would have to pay licensing rights to those companies. We didn't want to pay licensing rights to sell a picture with their logo in it. It's weird, complicated, but just trust me on that. Uh, handheld signs could be questionable. It depended upon what was in the sign. Uh, if it was something like, you know, hey, Aunt Sally, we miss you, that would be okay. We had to be careful with the names, though, because sometimes people would try to slip stuff through. Flat Stanley, that kind of a thing, was generally okay. There were times it, it wasn't, just because of how people did it. Anything unsafe, we were not allowed to take a picture of. Cheerleading tumbling, uh, sitting on fences, uh, in ride-restricted areas, those were a big no-no. Could not take pictures of those. Any inappropriate behavior. Uh, so, as an example... Heavy kissing. You could take a picture of a couple kissing. Uh, I'd love to do a couple of those where if you had a family with kids, get the kids, hide their eyes and looking gross while mom and dad give each other a quick kiss. It was a sweet photo. But you would have people sometimes want to get a little carried away. Nope. Not going to do that. <laughs> Sorry. No, again, family appropriate. How do we do all that? How do we avoid taking those pictures? Well, you got very good at being able to see things through your viewfinder and being aware of the background. You'd have to watch out for people in the background doing inappropriate stuff. <laughs> yes, people, when they photobomb, think that they're being funny when they flip the bird and, and things. And it's not funny. Don't be a doofus. But we would have to watch the background. And you... Every now and then you just have to drop the camera and tell somebody, you know, move on. Watch your background, watch your cropping, watch your framing. Uh, that was usually the easiest way to kind of get around it is to just look at what you were looking at, what that picture is going to be, and then kind of adjusting. And it might mean taking a half step over just to change the angle of the picture a little bit and you could move things around and crop things out. Uh, if it was gestures, you tell people, you know, hey, sorry, I can't do that. Um, and usually people were like, oh, okay. But every now and then they would tr still try to slip it in and you'd watch. If I had a group of guys that I thought was going to slip it in, I never counted on my pictures. Never counted down. But for them, I would count down just to see. Okay, guys, ready? One, two, uh-huh. Not going to do that. And I would tell them, it's not allowed. Sorry. Um, if they continued to try to do it, put the camera down and said, look, guys, let me explain this to you. We are not allowed to take pictures with those kinds of gestures and those kinds of things. If you're going to do it, I can't take your picture. It's that simple. Sorry. Uh, and most people would usually get it at that point and stop doing it. Signs, again, in, if they're inappropriate, sorry, I can't do that. You, for the most part, you just explain to the people, you know, look, I'm sorry, I can't do this because it has to be an appropriate picture and that would be inappropriate. Most people know what's appropriate and what's not. Uh, if it's something like on their hat, you just tell them, hey, uh, you can either take your hat off or turn it around backwards or sideways, just so I'm not getting that logo on the front if it's not appropriate. Uh, shirts, there are a lot of ways to hide them. You could get people to turn sideways, especially if there were several people in the group. Uh, then you just kind of line everybody up sideways. A lot of times with shirts, we wouldn't even necessarily tell them. We would just arrange the group so that they didn't know. If it was just them, you could also do things like have them stay in cross arm. Hey, look, you can't really see the logo anymore. Great way to hide it. If they're with characters, if we saw it ahead of time, we would give the character a heads up. And we could put them kind of behind the character a little bit. Again, if it's a group, you put them behind the other people in the group to hide it. Characters were great. They would actually tell the people, you know, cross arms, back to back, uh, and other things to hide it. Or um, <laughs> I had a few times where Mickey and Goofy were really good at going and putting their hand right over the logo so you couldn't see it. Now, I did have a couple people catch on to what was going on here. They're like, I want my shirt to be seen. Sorry, that's not an appropriate thing. We can't take a picture with that shirt. And if you would get a really belligerent, upset guest, which every now and then we would get, you would just kind of go, okay, look. I'm going to tell you right now, even if I take the picture, it's going to get blocked out later. You're not going to get the picture. And if they were just being a fit, you'd go ahead and take the picture anyways. Let them move on. And then as photographers, we would go over to uh, 
a phone or if we had a manager nearby, we'd let them know and they would call up Quality Assurance, who would then deal with the picture. Ah, uh, yes, Quality Assurance. QA was our fallback. Uh, now, a lot of people don't realize every single picture at Disney is screened. Every single picture is looked at. Every single one. <laughs> QA or Quality Assurance is basically the group of people that looks at every single picture and makes sure that it's up to Disney standards. They go through thousands of pictures. It's a quick process usually. By the way, if you're curious too about where the magic shots come in, yeah, QA might have a little bit to do with that as well. But QA are the ones that go through and screen, and if they see a picture that is inappropriate, whether it's behavior, whether it's logos, whether it's shirts or gestures, um, they'll flag it. And there's a few different things they can do. If it's a really low quality picture, they can just plain delete it. it just poof, gone, it, it's good riddance. What we would do a lot of times, and the word for this changes depending upon the Disney logo at the time, is it would be blocked or hidden. Basically what that means is the, the picture is flagged in such a way that it won't show up in the apps, it won't show up at the view, but managers can find them. Um, and there was a way that some of us photographers who had access could look them up and pull them up so we could see the picture and see why it had gotten blocked or hidden. So if you had somebody that was wearing something inappropriate or doing something inappropriate, this is usually what was done was it was flagged and hidden and then the guest couldn't see it. So today, if you pulled up your PhotoPass app, you know, and looked at the pictures, it wouldn't show up. You'd be like, where'd my picture go? Well, it very possibly got flagged because it was either low quality, the camera didn't work, or there was something inappropriate in the picture. That's basically what we did is we hid them. This allowed the guests to come in and if they really wanted to know where their picture was, we could look it up. And if it was flagged, some of us could then pull up the reasons because there was a way to take notes there and go, oh yeah, sorry, um, that picture has been flagged. Or most of the time what we would just tell them uh, to save the whole argument, especially if it was obvious that it was not appropriate, is we tell them, hey folks, I'm sorry, um, it didn't go through our system, it's not there, sorry, no photo. Now, if we did have a photo that genuinely did not come through because there was another issue, we can make arrangements to go retake the photo. But yeah, with inappropriate stuff, you just tell them, hey, sorry, folks, um, the photo's gone. It's not there. And that was, that was the easiest way. And sometimes QA would even make the notes that, hey, this had happened. We were told about this. And then we could tell them, you know, hey, um, I can see in the notes that our photographer let you know that it probably wouldn't pass and it didn't. And that picture is no longer available. That was the, basically the easy way to do it. QA was our fallback. QA were the ones that uh, if the photographer missed, because the photographer did sometimes. Sometimes there'd be something in the background they didn't see or they were just in such a hurry or so focused that they didn't notice it that QA would take care of it. Even so, every now and then a picture would slip through, but that was rare. It was unusual. Usually between the photographer and QA, we caught it. Now today, of course, things have changed a little bit. That was years ago. Now you've got these things, you know, the photo boxes that are showing up more and more. Uh, the photo box obviously can't tell somebody their shirt isn't appropriate or their gesture isn't appropriate or tell them it won't take the picture. So I imagine QA is getting a lot more photos that they're having to deal with that haven't been properly screened at the camera end. I don't know what the workload is like for QA now. Uh, it would be interesting to find out. That's one of my issues with the photo boxes. Not only is it missing candidates and good quality pictures, but it's not going to be able to screen pictures and prevent bad ones from going through. For me, that's a big issue because that's going to create more work for QA. Um, and at some point, it's going to mean that there's more pictures going out that are going to have things in them that they shouldn't because it means QA is more likely to miss them. Um, and at some point, you're going to end up with some pictures of Disney characters and things that they don't want Disney characters with. It's it's just another issue, um, another can of worms that, unfortunately, Disney, with their cost-cutting measures, um, is going to run into a bigger issue. So uh, just something to think about in the future and not trying to give any of you ideas. Don't do that. <laughs> but, but that's basically what happens. If somebody comes up and they're wearing something inappropriate or doing something inappropriate, that's kind of the process that we went through to try to make sure that uh, we didn't end up with pictures of them. Did you find that interesting? I'd love to know. Uh, please share 
comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Do you want to know more? Did you deal with it? Hey, were you QA or a photographer? And what did you do to help prevent pictures? I'd love to know that too. Please share it in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my patrons, my YouTube members. Uh, this question actually came from one of my patrons. And they get more access. There's all sorts of stuff. Check out the link below. You can see more that way. Thank you so incredibly much for watching. God bless. As a Walt Disney PhotoPass photographer, Walt Disney, we had to make sure that our pictures would pass muster and not compromise the... We had to make sure that our pictures were... I got this written down. You wouldn't know it, would you? I got sent a question that I get asked on a pretty regular basis that... <sighs> I promise you, it's written right here. <laughs> so QA... Am I in the right place? Yeah. <laughs>I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts, your comments, your suggestions, your ideas. Be sure to share them in the comments below, or you can contact me. There's information in the description that has my email address, fan pages, information about merchandise, and so much more. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to hit that like button, share the video, and if you haven't already, hit the button right up there to subscribe. And in fact, if you did enjoy this, I've even got another video for you right here. And also about these wonderful people here, those are my YouTube members and my patrons, the ones whose financial support makes this possible. I couldn't do it without them. If you want to know more about that and the perks that come with it, well, be sure to check the description. There's a link right down there. Thank you so incredibly much. God bless.